Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. This is Tony of Comic Conversations, the podcast that reviews more comics than anybody else. You can check out my show at halfguard.com. On today's single issue Monday, I will be covering Guardians of the Galaxy 1. Now, I bet a lot of you are wondering, well, which exactly Guardians of the Galaxy number 1? There's been several over the years. I'm sure a lot of people are maybe thinking the one by by Michael Bendis from a couple years ago, or I believe there's a new one coming up. No, I've chosen Guardians of the Galaxy number 1, volume 1. (laughs) <laughs> yes, the one from 1968. The one by Arnold Drake and Gene Colon. Guardians of the Galaxy number one, Earth Shall Overcome. All right, with that out of the way, let's go straight into our book. A 10 century old man and his fantastic guerrilla legion fight to free planet Earth. It's the year 3007. A single flag flies over the United Lands of Earth, the ULE, as well as over dozens of planets in the ULE Federation. War amongst the nations may be over, but across the star systems, it has only begun. We are shown astronaut Charlie 23. He's the fifth generation of his family born on Jupiter. Charlie's body has been changed to adapt Jupiter's harsh conditions. 11 times mass and 3 times the gravity of Earth. After 6 months of military service in space, Charlie was scheduled to make his way home, but it wouldn't be that simple. Charlie is shocked to discover that there is no welcoming party for him. Sure, he may have lost radio contact two months ago, but that shouldn't have stopped a welcoming party. There's always a welcoming party for a mailman coming out of isolation. A bunch of reptilian Badoon are there to greet the last free Jovian. Charlie makes quick work of the Badoon and drops them in an incendiary. Charlie doesn't know what to make of this new revelation. Are the rest fighting the Badoon? Charlie has to get to HQ, then he'll get his answers. HQ is also abandoned. Charlie has to get home. Maybe there's still hope for his parents. Charlie's father is being hauled away in a truck. Charlie makes chase. Prisoners are being used to mine Harkovite without protection, no less. Exposure to Harkovite is deadly after prolonged exposure. Charlie must rescue his father. One of the Badoon gets the drop on Charlie. Charlie fights back. Although Charlie thinks to himself, what is he doing? He can sneak back into his ship, civilization, and come back with the ULE battalion saving his father and everyone on Jupiter. Running from the blasting Badoon, Charlie makes his way to a teleport. He can get to anywhere in the solar system from there. Charlie makes his way to the living matter transport and finds himself on Pluto. Pluto 2 is also abandoned. Charlie grabs some food for the road. The food in the mess hall is abandoned as though everyone disappeared mid-meal. Meanwhile, on Pluto, the Badoon's hounds have discovered another survivor. Who could it be? As the hounds make chase to catch Charlie, a diamond arm beckons him. The crystal arm belongs to a crystal man, a Polyvian. He tells Charlie what happened to Pluto. It was evacuated two months ago with the remaining crystal men to blow up some industrial complexes. The crystal man also reveals to Charlie his plan. He is in possession of a remote control, but for what? The radio transmitter is for several robotic servants on Pluto. They'll serve as a distraction for our heroes. Sadly, the servants are no match for the Badoon warriors. As the two head towards the world's Teletran, they exchange names. Our crystal man is named Martin X. Martin X and Charlie are headed, hopefully, towards a free planet called Earth. Cut to Earth, where the Badoon have also added Earth to the planets under their control. They are talking to an Earthman named Vance Astro. First Earthling to the stars. The Badoon are there to extract information from Astro. They apply their memory probe on Vance. Astro has been alive for the last thousand years. We are sent back to his first memory from a thousand years ago, exploring space from the year 1988. Vance's trip is to explore the deepest edges of space. The trip alone will take thousands of years, and as a result, he is put in a cryogenic sleep to survive the journey. His copper suit allows him to survive being a thousand years old. Vance lands on a distant world only to find Earthlings waiting for him. But how can this be, he says. They tell him faster than light travel was achieved 800 years ago. The Badoon tell Vance that they will allow Vance to volunteer to work for them. Vance refuses, but the Badoon are quick to threaten Vance's friend. To prove his loyalty, they force him to kill his friend Yondu. After some back and forth, Vance agrees to kill Yondu. But with one caveat, he would do it with Yondu's bow and arrow. Vance pulls back the bow, and as soon as he lets go, Yandu's whistle changes the course of the arrow, allowing it to fly and attack the Badoon. Vance and Yandu make their way to a teleport to escape from the Badoon. Who but Charlie and Martinex exit the teleport and meet Yandu and Vance. Not knowing if they are friend and foe, Yandu says the arrow is flying towards them. 
Martin next uses his body structure to convert light waves, allowing him to freeze the very air. Vance is shocked to discover the two are not Badoon. Our four heroes team up to fight the wicked Badoon. Vance uses his light concentration ability to shoot extreme heat at the Badoon's guns. With the Badoon defeated, the four agree to find the free colony or die trying. It's then that they sing their variant of the struggle song, but change to Earth Shall Overcome, someday. End of issue one. Thanks for checking out my video. And don't be a stranger to halfcard.com for my podcast, Comic Conversation, the podcast that reviews more comics than anybody else. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, check you guys out next time. Adios.